Ah, I see. Boop. So don't let him go behind you. And if he does go behind you, don't do this, okay. right? Well, because if he goes behind you, he could eat something or he could trip you up. When he starts going, just free. Yes. That's where we pee pee. Right. Good job. How are you? Yes. So notice how my leash is short, right? I'm gonna pay him right away for the orientation, right? Cause we got a little kid. Yes. Cause what do little kids do? They stare and they point, they like dogs. All right, we're gonna cross cause we got a sidewalk over here. And the sidewalk runs out. <laughs> I'm gonna lift you right over that. Lift you right over that. So you notice my leash hasn't been really extended more than a couple feet. Right? right? Well, because I don't really have a whole lot of uh, room right now. I got people come in and, you know, I want to be able to make sure that, like, he doesn't go under there. Right? My, my rule is if I don't see your snout, you got to come out. Okay. Right? Because I don't need him under there eating something I can't see. Right? Yes. What did you see, butterfly? Right? So anytime he goes like this, right, right and he focuses on something, yes, and treat him. That's counter conditioning. And what that'll do is that'll give him not only a positive association, but he'll start to develop an auto disengage. So let's say there's a bunch of kids playing or another dog and you yes and treat him, he'll start to auto disengage and focus on you. Right. Right. And you know, give him time to smell. This creates a lot of mental stimulation. And uh, he'll be more tired when he gets home. Leave it. Yes. Right, if I need to move on, I ask for a leave it, give him payment. Now we can just move on. Good boy. Come on. That's good. Yeah, he seems like he's a pretty happy pup. Yeah, no, he's doing good. You guys are doing good. Touch. Yes, practice your touches out here, right? I always tell people it's like shooting free throws in the driveway, right? Leave it, touch. Yes. Practice these things when... Okay. Can you <laughs> chew your food? Practice okay, these right? Practice these things like leave it in touch when there's not much going on. So when he sees a cat or another dog or something's really active out here and you need to get his attention, you got a lot of practice. Good job. Now, if you want to start teaching him a heel, when he's walking right next to you, right, pay him right at your pan scene, but pay while you move. Okay. The mistake people make is they stop. Pay him for, for steps. So count one, two, three, four, five. Yes, right? And see, I'm gonna keep moving. Right, I'm gonna give him a little smooch to get his attention. We're gonna stop here. Hi. Hello. Yes! Right? So we're gonna mark and pay for people because what do people do? They stop, they stare, right? right? They, uh, they do all kinds of stuff. And what happens is dogs get excited. So if you mark and pay him for people, he'll start to auto disengage and turn back to you. Right, see now I can give him a little bit more leash. And you may wanna look into getting the hands free. Right. They're really nice. Well, you know, when you got to pick up the business or if you need, uh, yeah. you know, something happens and you need to, you know, you need to, anything can happen out here. Where are you going, big man? What are you doing? Come on, big boy. Come on. And again, a lot of people ask, you know, should the dog be on the left or the right? The question is, what side do you want to be on? So I might want to be on the left. I right. might want to be on the right. I just walk around the dog. So whatever's convenient for me. Don't walk in the sewer. Come on. Good boy. Okay. The other thing is when you're out here, condition your prompts, your whistle, kissy, clickies. Yes. Right? Just get those prompts conditioned because those are really helpful to get his attention either as standalone. Drop it. All the way. Thank you. So I'm not going to pay him for that. Because I don't want him to get used to picking something up and then I pay him for it. Right, so he did a nice drop it, so we'll just move on. Right. Leave it. But if he doesn't make contact with his mouth, he just investigates it, I'll get to leave it. Right? Yeah, 
a little kid, huh? Leave it. Yes. Don't get paid. So I feel like he, you know he naturally walks it on the leash pretty well. Yeah, he walks great. Well, here here's the thing that messes everybody up with leash walking. They want the dog to walk by their side the whole time. And what that does is it prevents the dog from gathering scent. Right. And then they don't get as much mental stimulation. Right. Right. So a heel is fine. So if you want to teach them how to heal, you know, this is a good street to do it on, right? So again, we're going to count steps. Four, five. Yes. Right. And I'm going to pay him right on my pan seam while I move. Yes. Right. And I'm going to pay him right on my pan seam while I keep moving. And I suggest to people to do that maybe like, you know, a half a block. Right? right? You don't want to do it for the whole walk. But it's nice to have a heel. Might be in PetSmart. Maybe there's somebody coming, you don't have anywhere to go, and you need them on your side. Right. So it's a good thing to practice. It's a nice thing to have, but you don't want to do it for the whole walk. Right? But also, you're not saying the word heel. You're just, not yet. You're just conditioning them to be here. Right. Once I feel like I have 80%, I'll put it on cue. Right? Oh, you going to see Mama? Yeah, you want to walk out with Mama? Yeah, what are you doing? Where are you going? Yeah. Good boy. Okay, leave it. Touch. Yes. Again, practice that stuff when there's nothing going on. Right. You know? You keep him left, right, center. Don't let him go behind you. Right. And he's going to get bigger. Like, look at my arm. Like, he could easily, right. like, he could easily hurt you just by going behind you. So he keeps trying to go behind me, and I keep preventing it by just gently moving him over to the side. The other thing is dogs go behind you, they eat something, you, know, you didn't see it, and they saw it, and they, they grab it. You cut in front. Yeah. What are you doing? Leave it. So you see how he's a little distracted, so I use those whistles to get him to motivate, right? Boy. So you see how he was a little weirded out by this? Right. Yes. So I yesed and treated him for it, let him check it out. Because this is static, but notice how the tarp's moving. Right? Boy, yes! Good job. Yeah, check it out. Weird stuff, right? Yeah, good boy. Okay, come on, bud. Where are you going? Trying to get leaves? Yeah? Come on. Oh, you got it? Leave it. Yes. So you see, after I ask him to leave it, I start whistling to prompt him on, right? I'm not gonna keep repeating the cue or saying his name. After I ask him to leave it, leave it. Yes. Right? So I might whistle, make kissy sounds. I can run right through those sounds whenever I need to. What do you see? What do you see? Oh, what do we got? Love your sticks. Leave it. Yes. Okay, let's go. Come on, bud. So it was subtle, but when that car went by, he whipped his head around real quick. Right. So I marked and paid him for that car. So as I was saying earlier, a lot of people contact me with their dogs eight months. And they're like, barks at everything, didn't bark as a puppy. So, you know, a couple thousand times he experiences that, we're not drinking water. A couple, you know, thousand times he hears or sees a car go by. You know, when he gets to be an adolescent, he gets some more cognition, he might start barking at cars. Let's see what he does with this one here. Yes. So you see how he looked at it? Right? No, no big exaggerated behavior. But again, six months from now, that might be the kind of thing where it makes him a little startled. Right. Maybe not though. Come on, let's get some water and we'll go work on some leave it cues. Come on. Come on, let's go get some water.